One of the best ways to get extra mileage out of your Altair computer is to install and run the CPM operating system. Of course, that's much easier said than done, especially if you don't have a working disk system already connected to your Altair. But today I'm going to show you how you can get CPM up and running on your Altair, quite, plos quite possibly in the matter of a few minutes even, without having to buy or install a floppy disk controller, and without having to buy or connect a disk drive. <coughs> Excuse me. Instead of exchanging disk data through a floppy controller, we're going to exchange it through a standard serial board, one you probably already have for that matter. And instead of using a disk drive for storage, we're going to use a serial disk server running on a PC. Now the serial interface board you want to use is this board right here. This is an 882SIO made specifically for the Altair. And this is probably the board you are using as your console serial port. It's very common and is supported by pretty much all Altair software. This first port right here is the uh, console port that the Altair software expects. The second port in general isn't used by any Altair software, so you probably don't use it, or if you do, it's not very frequent. That's the port we're going to use to hook to the serial disk server. Now, if you don't have one of these, or if in addition to one of these, you happen to have this board right here, this is the Altair 2SIO JP. This is a drop-in equivalent for the original 2SIO, but it has a few enhancements. And one of the enhancements that's useful for this project is that it can run at a higher baud rate. And that will come in handy for getting better performance. And we'll see that detail a little bit later in the video. Another nice thing about this board is it's still available for sale today. So if you don't have a 2SIO at all, you can always get one, or this equivalent, I should say, um, because this board is still available. All right, as far as the disk server is concerned, that was an easy part of this project as well because the disk server already exists. I wrote it a number of years ago to support the Altair FDC Plus. Uh, that is a disk controller that is a drop-in replacement for the original Altair controller. And of course, that means it works with the original Altair drives. But in addition to that, it can make a variety of other drives look exactly like the original Altair 8 inch and even 5 and a quarter inch drives. And as you might expect, it can also make disk third from that PC server that I wrote look just like original Altair drives. And so that's how this whole setup is going to work. Now let me do a video cut here and get this computer set up and we'll look at the hardware that we're going to run this on. First demo, I'm going to use my Altair 8800C computer. As we've demonstrated in other videos, this is kind of a hybrid of some new and old technology. See, so you have modern power supplies there in the back. Um, all that's required to get this working is CPU, RAM, and then I have the 2SIO JP over here like we talked about. Now the CPU board is an exact duplicate of the original Altair CPU board. It has the same artwork, the same parts. Now the only difference is that the board itself is manufactured today. So that's a good way that Hobbyist kept this alive for us. Now right behind it is a front panel interface board that the CPU uses to control the front panel interface. And it allows use of a 50 pin ribbon cable instead of all the individual wires in the original Altair. The RAM board I'm using is a vintage board from 1980 called the RAM 17 made by CompuPro. This is a great board to use in vintage um, Altair projects. Number one, it's static RAM, uh, full 64K, so it'll handle all your needs. Static makes it reliable with the Altair. Um, also, it works with front panel deposits, which a lot of these older boards, uh, the larger ones, do not support front panel machines anymore. But this one does, so it's great to have for the Altair. It's also very easy to disable sections of the board, especially up in higher RAM where you might want to put an EEPROM board or you might want to use a memory mapped I.O. device like a disk controller or something. Um, another thing that's handy is that these 20, these uh, static RAMs on here have the same pinouts as your EEPROMs do. So in other words, a 2716 EEPROM can drop into any of these RAM sockets um, interchangeably. Uh, in fact, you can use a 2732 in there as well. It'll only use 2K of it, but you can just program the same thing in both halves and just drop it in. So I've actually, I don't know if you can see it down here, there's a part with a label. That's actually an EEPROM. And in that, I've got some of the standard, um, I have all of the standard Altair ROMs. I have the turnkey monitor at FD100, I have the multi boot loader at FE100, and I have the original disk boot loader at FF100. Now, just below those at FC100, 
I have a bootloader for this serial CPM. Obviously, the original disk bootloader can't load this because there is no floppy controller in here, and that's what it's trying to control. Now, you don't have to use um, a boot EEPROM like I'm, like I'm doing here. You can also just boot from RAM using um, a hex loader or a binary loader. And I'll show you that on the second demo. But for this first demo, I'm going to use this uh, EEPROM, which I put a serial bootloader in. All right, and then finally, like I said, we have the 2SIOJP because it can go at higher baud rates. And we're running this at its max baud rate, which is 76.8 kilobaud. And at that baud rate, this performs basically the same, in fact, a little bit better than original CPMs for the Altair did on original hardware back in the day. So it's a pretty nice system. Um, given that you don't have a disk controller or any of these other items, it's a nice running CPM. Now, if you don't have a 2SIO JP, you're going to be forced to run at a lower baud rate. Uh, maximum on the regular 2SIO you can get is 19.2, which is about one fourth the speed of uh, the 76.8. So it does slow down performance a bit and it feels a little sluggish, but it does still work if you had something to get done. All right, so from this 2SIO, we have two connections. We have one going to the back of our console. That will be how we get our terminal. And the second port will, of course, go over to our um, floppy disk server. All right, let's take a quick look at that floppy disk server. I have it over here on this PC. I can get in here without too many bumps. All right, so as you can see, the server has spots to mount four disks. They're using the Altair nomenclature of 0, 1, 2, and 3. I've only have things, disk images, loaded into the first two disks because like in the real world, two disks is generally enough to get everything done. Now the format of these disk images is very common throughout the internet. It's a trivial format. It is, linear, it is literally a linear copy of the surface of the Altair 8-inch disk from the first byte on track 0 to the very last byte on track 76. Just all the metadata, everything that's on the disk. So it's a very simple format, and anything you find out there will use this format for the most part. The SimH emulator uses it, uh, the Altair clone uses it, the Altair Duino uses it, of course this floppy disk controller um, server uses it, um, as well as utilities for reading and writing, archiving and restoring real hard disks, excuse me, real floppy disks on a real system. Uh, those utilities are called PC to flop and flop to PC. They use the same format as well. Um, so in the disk zero, which is the boot disk, I have a bootable version of the serial CPM. I had to write a BIOS specifically for this serial controller, let's call it, because of course the normal one would not work. I based it on an, an original Altair BIOS, and so that's in the boot disk. And that really only affects the two tracks, uh, the two boot tracks on the disk. The rest of the disk is the exact same format as all the other CPM Altair disks out there. And in fact, that's another nice thing about this. All CPM disks throughout all of time have had the same CPM format. And if you're familiar with CPM at all, you know how different the DPH can be for all these different drives. Um, but the Altairs are all the same. So even CPM 1.4 has the same version, as the same layout as CPM 2.2 from Lifeboat and from Burcon. And then a BIOS I wrote to speed things up, a track buffer BIOS uses that same one, and so does this serial one. So all these disk images are completely interchangeable. So in the second um, disk drive, I just have an arbitrary CPM disk loaded. Again, it couldn't boot this disk, but all the data, the directory, everything on that is completely interchangeable. Interchangeable. So you can load and run programs from all these other CPM disks you might find out there. All right, as you can see, I have a COM port selected, and I'm running this at 76.8. If you're going to run this yourself, make sure you have version 1.4 or newer. 1.4, I added these slower baud rates that were used in the uh, for this demonstration. You can see the floppy disk controller itself used these high baud rates up here. Uh, but then for this new project, I added these lower baud rates. Uh, other than that, it's exactly the same, but make sure you've got version 1.4 newer on your computer if you're going to um, try to run this. Of course, look in the video, look in the information under the video, and I'll put links to all the things you need to be able to run this. All right, I'm going to go get this fired up, and we'll do our first demo. All right, so let's go ahead and get CPM booted using the configuration I just showed you. Turn on the computer, give it a hard reset. This one and this demo, like I said, I'm going to use the boot 
loader I have in ROM. That's FC00. And later we'll show you how to just boot from RAM if you don't want to bother with the ROM. Hit run. And we're up and running already. All right, the first thing you pr probably do is a directory. It'll show us what's on drive A. I can do directory or drive B. And you can see it's very responsive. I'll run a stat command. That'll show us how much free space we have on each one. Uh, you can do a stat disk. That'll tell us information about the drives. And you can see they're both identical. Uh, this, again, is the standard layout of all the Altair CPMs that are out there. And you get about 300 kilobytes of available space. That's more than the standard single-sided, single-dense in the IBM format, primarily because we have 32 sectors per track here instead of just 26. Uh, LS, this is a sorted directory. Um, and we can see we have the assembler out here, a tool for com computing CRCs, the editor, etc. Um, let's take a look at this demo.asm and run the assembler. This is a little program that uses CPM to do input and output. It writes hello to the console, asks for the name, echoes back the name, and then basically exits. So we can assemble this. As soon as this pops down a line, the assembler's been loaded. And you can see that was relatively quick. Again, this is on par with everything that was made back in the day, the Lifeboat CPMs and the Burkon CPMs. And this is running at 76.8 kilobot. All right, so that's done. And now at this point, Oops. We have some more demo files. Now we have the hex file and the listing. We can load demo. Load takes a hex file and creates a .com file that's then runnable. So now we can run our demo. All right, can't even spell my name right. So it types a name, echoes it back, and then just exits. All right, um, what else can we do here? We can switch to drive B, see what's on that. This has mBasic on it. We can run that. mBasic is a, quite a large program. It expands um, across several extents, which means it has to go back to the home directory and back. But this actually, again, loads quicker than it does in uh, real CPMs from back in the day. You can see what on disk uh, with the files command. Um, in basic, you, can, you can't just give it the drive letter. You have to give a whole... Um, search pattern star dot star. Oops, we want uh, files dot base to give us an idea of what basic files we have. So we could load chase. Closing quotes not necessary as you can tell. So anyway, I mean it loaded a fairly large program. That was very quick. If we can go back to CPM. This is doing a warm boot. All right, so. Yeah, good feel on all this. Again, at 76.8, it's a very nice system. Now, 76.8 is not a standard baud rate, um, oddly enough. All the baud rates doubled for a long time. They go 300, 600, 1200, 2400, etc. 96, 19.2, 38.4, 78.6 would be next. Um, 76.8 would be next, but it's not. Um, at that point, the standard baud rates take a one third jump and go over to 57.6. And then 57.6 doubles to 115.2. That doubles to 230.4 or somewhere along those lines. I think I got it. But anyway, so 76.8 is not a standard baud rate. And I can't guarantee that your USB adapter or your computer will support 76.8. All you can do is really just try it. Um, I found that the prolific chipset USB drivers, the PL2303s, the driver that's supplied for Windows for that doesn't seem to support 76.8, at least not on the few I've tried. Um, I have an FTDI chipset in this one, and that driver on Windows does support 76.8. Can't run 76.8, 38.4 will work. Again, that'll still require the 2SIO JP to get 38.4. 38.4, you'll start to feel it a bit more sluggish, uh, but it's still not bad. And then we'll demonstrate an actual 2SIO board with a max baud rate of 19.2 in just a minute. And that, yeah, that's definitely sluggish, but again, it still works. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, run move CPM. You can see we have, I'll never get around this typing problem, will I? 
Okay, we have move CPM, but I called it 2S, move CPM for 2S IO. Hopefully that helps you remember. We booted, we were um, 56K. If you type move CPM with no parameters, it sizes memory and just makes it the maximum size you can. So here it came up with 62K. That's because I have prom starting at, uh, at F800. So the last 2K is prom. So at this point you can run sysgen. It's asking you where you want to get the source. If you just hit return at that prompt, it'll take it out of memory and move CPM left it in memory. Destination drive, I'll type A. This particular system doesn't echo it, but it got it, you can see here. And now it's going to write it. Now all CPM sysgens have this little bit of confusion here. Uh, destination drive name or return to reboot. It means you could do B or drive C if you wanted. But you don't want to hit return to reboot if you just changed drive A and changed its size. Um, or the version, because it's not going to then be compatible because it's going to load a, um, a BDOS and the command control processor without loading the new BIOS yet, and those will all be at different addresses. So at this point, you want to do a hard reset or a, a cold boot. So I'm examining FC100 and I'll hit run, and now we're back up, and you can see we have 62K. If you had less RAM, you can specify how much you want it to be. You could do like 48, and then it would be 48K. All right, so a very nice CPM. Um, feels good to run it, and um, didn't have to do much of anything to get this up and running. Now, in the next demo, I will show you how to boot without doing a prom, and I'll do it on an Altair with the 2SIO so we can see how slow that is. And I'm going to show some comparisons um, on a little chart that I've made of some of these different CPMs and how fast they are for a few common functions that you might have done back in the day. For the final demonstration, I'm going to use my Altair 8800B computer. On a side note, here's a couple of Altair 8-inch drives over here on the right. Now, we won't be using them, of course, since we're using the serial disk server. Now, in this demonstration, the main things I want to do differently is I want to use a 2SIO instead of the 2SIO JP. So that means our maximum baud rate is 19.2. And then I also want to boot from RAM as opposed to having a custom boot ROM to build, boot the serial server. Now, in order to do that, you're going to have to load something from the PC over into RAM to get you going. The easiest way to do that is to use a terminal emulator for your console serial port. So that's what we're going to do. All right, if you look inside this computer, you can see the hardware is basically the same thing we had inside the 8800C. Over on the far right is the CPU board and the front panel interface. Those are just the standard 8800B boards. In the middle is the 2SIO. That's going to be our console and our serial disk server connection. And then on the far left is the very same RAM board we used in that previous video, previous uh, demonstration. All right, so let me go ahead and get this turned on. I'm going to uh, run a monitor. I have it up at F800. The easiest way to do this is to use a monitor. Uh, if you're using the 2SIO JP, it has a monitor ROM. I'm running something called Altmon, but most of the newer monitors, or maybe something you did for yourself, has an Intel hex loader. That's the easiest way to get some data over into the computer. If not, you can do it by entering a very small binary loader on the front panel, um, shorter than the typical uh, bootstrap loader for basic, let's say, and use that to get data in to begin with. And I'll put some links on how to do that in the information under the video. But I'm gonna use this monitor. It has an Intel hex load function. So hex load zero brings it right here through the console port. And I'm gonna send the very same boot file that is read off of disk boot.hex. This is read off of the disk by the boot ROM if you had one and stuck into memory at zero. So basically all I've done is do that manually. And so now I can go to zero and boot the computer. All right, so it's off and running. You can see it over here. We're on track zero. Now it's reading run and now we're coming up and running. So obviously that works a bit slower than it did for uh, um, 76.8. So if you do a directory, there's drive A, directory on B. So the same commands that we did before. We run a stat command. Everything's just a little bit slower. Well, it's more than a little bit when you do something serious, but um, loading the programs takes a while. Okay, but everything is the same in terms of the disk we're using. All we're doing is running 19.2 instead of 76.8. And that transfer rate's about one fourth the speed is that, that we were running. So like LS is going to take a while to load. See, it hasn't even loaded yet. 
there now Alice is run and now it'll give us our sorted directory. So I'm not going to go through and demonstrate all these for you. If I was to assemble the demo command, uh, it takes quite a bit longer, about a minute. Uh, but this whole thing does work. Uh, loading basic um, takes a good long time as well. It takes, um, let's see, it takes about 24 seconds is the note I have here. I'm going to show you a chart in just a minute about that. So yeah, it feels very sluggish, but it is still working. So if there's something you had to accomplish using CPM, like a utility or something like that, uh, you can get it going enough to at least use the thing. All right. Um, so anyway, let me show you this chart that'll give you an idea. Let's let that finish. It's doing a warm boot. There we go. All right. So let me show you this chart of some uh, performance measurements of various CPM. So Lifeboat CPM was an original CPM back in the day. And what I've done is a few things like an assembly utility called dump, a little bit of mBasic, and then run CRC on all the COM files on the disk. And for all these comparisons, I use the exact same disk in drive B. So they're all having the exact same disk layout, location of data, etc. So to assemble the program dump in Lifeboat took 35 seconds. So load basic took 11 and a half. Do a CRC on all the COM files on the disk took 120 seconds. With the 2SIO running at 76A, which is our previous demo, you see we assembled dump just a little bit faster. Loading M basic is several seconds faster. And doing the CRC on the whole disk is also substantially faster. If we weight all three of those equally, it's about 20 21% less time to get things done than it was on actual lifeboat CPM. Now, if you have to drop to 38.4 because you can't get 76.8, you can see the times all go up. We're actually 36% longer to do all that, so it's slower. And then this column is the 19.2K that we just ran, and you can see it's substantially longer. To do this assemble was, you know, 102 seconds, you know, over a minute and a half. Loading basic, like I said, took 24 and a half. To do the CRC was 270 seconds, so, you know, minutes. Um, so it's over twice as slow, about two and a half times longer than a CPM would take, but it works. Now, as a comparison for all this, I have written a CPM a number of years ago. I call it CPM 2.2B. It's meant to be as fast and efficient as possible. No new hardware, no new anything, just a better BIOS. And you can see the performance increase it provided over lifeboat of the day. So these two are 100% compatible, same exact hardware that they would run on, this is a real CPM running on a disk controller. But you can see everything is substantially faster and it takes 40% uh, less time to get things done. So back in the day, somebody could have just written a better basic and almost, I mean, a better BIOS and almost doubled the speed of the system for free. Um, but of course, the PC came along and clobbered all the CPM's hopes anyway, so a lot of that didn't matter. All right, well, that does it for this video. Again, I'll put some links in the description under the video to help you find some of this. Uh, feel free to contact me with questions if you try to play with it as well.